Welcome to a new episode of the Wool and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Wool and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, in this video, I want to introduce to you a new yarn that we created and I'm super excited about this one. Um, it's just a very special uh, every time I create a new yarn and it comes to the doorstep of the studio, it's such a special moment to feel it for the first time because even if in theory everything should be lovely, it never. I'm always so nervous to see if it turns out the way I wanted it to. Um, and with this one, I'm super happy and I cannot wait to release this into the world. I don't know, my heart really lies in creating custom spun yarns for wool and twine because I always find something that you know, I, w I want to optimize, I want to make different, I want to, you know, I feel inspired by and so this is really where my heart lies currently and what I really enjoy to do. And so I'm so happy to have another new one um, in this uh, episode. Um, so without further ado, let me uh, introduce it to you. This is our new BFL Romney blend, which is um, a blend of 75% uh, Romney and 25% naturally colored brown BFL fibers, um, which is quite rare to come across, so I'm very happy to have this. Um, it has been custom spun for us in the UK and I'm absolutely in love with it. Um, there will be a DK weight version, so this one, and a four play weight version uh, available. And they have both both been spun to a slightly looser twist in order to have a bit of a drape. And the whole concept of this yarn was kind of to create something that would highlight um, the beautiful sheep breeds that we have, um, apart from, you know, the classics that everyone might know, and also create a yarn that would be um, relatively suitable for sensitive people. Um, I should put a disclaimer here because it's, you know, I I have spoken about this in quite a couple of episodes before, but softness and how you experience the feel of a yarn is incredibly individual. Um, and while I can be very tolerant uh, for some yarns and I can, for example, wear a little OP around my neck without being bothered, um, someone else might not even be able to wear anything but super soft baby soft yarns or not no woolen yarns at all so it's a very individual thing and I get this question so many times where someone's like how soft is this and that yarn and I always always avoid to 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 respond to this question in a manner where I'm like it's soft or not because it's you know very individual um, but what I can say about this is that we designed it in a way that, for example, in comparison to our BFM Massim, which has those Massim fibers that have slightly longer of the dark hairs that sometimes even poke out of the yarn, um, those can be a little bit irritating or prickly to people who are very sensitive. Um, same with, for example, a Gotland fiber or a Wensleydale, when they have those, you know, every single hair in th these breeds is slightly um, thicker and can stick out of something that might be irritating to some people. And even though the BFMSM in my eyes already is a very soft yarn, um, you know, I knew that this uh, might be, for some people, it might not be enough and that they get ir irritated from those little Massim hairs sticking out. And uh, with this in mind, BFA Romney was designed. And this yarn is has no, as you can see, it doesn't really have any hair sticking out. It's a pretty, I don't know how you say that, but it's a pretty, yeah, sleek, not, not really sleek. It's still woolly and warm and lovely, but it's, it has a bit more of a sleek surface, if you will, uh, than the BFM Massum, and therefore I hope it's even less, um, you know, irritating for people who might be very sensitive to wool. Um, at least that was the whole concept behind this. And I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out, if I'm honest. Um, I absolutely love it. It's To me, it's incredibly soft. Same goes for my family who feedbacked me in this case, because it's 
as that I can just individually experience it in a way, but not everyone experiences it the same. Um, but yeah, this is what the others have feedback me as well. And I'm just in love with it. I also love how it knits up and I'm going to show you a couple of samples later on in the video. Um, and I love the color because it's like a neutral, natural color but it's not as cool toned as, for example, our BFM Massim is. It's more warmish in undertone due to the brown BFL mixed into it. And so, yeah, this is how it looks in a skein. Next up, let me show you a couple of uh, swatches and samples in the next section so you can get an idea of how it knits up. So here it is how it looks knitted up. This is the BFL Romney DK. Um, knitted on a four millimeter needle um, with 20 stitches and 29 rows. So this is how the fabric turned out and it's quite bouncy as you can see it bounces back into shape quite easily and it's very soft and very still has a beautiful drape maybe a little less than BFMSM but it is still very drapey and beautiful. So this is how it looks knitted up and to give you an even better idea of how it looks like, um, we also prepared quite a couple of samples and um, yeah, different types so you can get an idea on how it will look like. But let me show them to you straight away. <clears throat> this is the first sample just knitted in the undyed BFR uh, sorry, BFR Romney DK version. And this is the Fennel cardigan by Orlan Such, Such of Ted Beige. I will link all the patterns below, of course, that were mentioned. And this is just in the beautiful undyed colorway, a very simple, clean, minimalistic kind of cardigan pattern with a very clever shoulder design that is like a saddle, saddle shoulder, I think is what this is called. And a super sweet uh, eye cord. How do you? See? How am I gonna show this? Eye cord um, bind off for the buttons and the button band. I think it's just so sweet. Just a really beautiful pattern, and they, it has these special ribbing uh, details on the cuffs and the hem as well, and. I think it really highlights the beautiful um, texture of this yarn really well. So this is the Fennel cardigan and uh, we made it slightly cropped um, <clears throat> just because I'm, you know, not as tall. But this is a size 5, so my size, um, you know, it's. I think it was very fitted in the size 4, which is usually my size. So we went for one size up and it's a bit boxier this way, which I really enjoy. So, yeah, this is the Fennel cardigan and I'm absolutely in love with it and can't wait to wear it. It is actually, um, it used just about 400 grams for the crop version. Um, so if you are a size similar to me, then probably five skeins um, should be enough. Um, but you can check all the meterage and all that on the Ravelry page of the pattern that I'm linking below. Um, but yeah just to give you an idea of how the fabric also behaves and show you how it knits up. I think the fabric is just beautiful and this is going to be such a wardrobe staple piece that I absolutely love. So yeah, um, this is the Fennel cardigan or Fanny, Fanny, I don't know how it's pronounced. Um, but I'm really in love with it and it's so sweet. Um, about 400 grams were used for this one. Um, and to show you another pattern on how it knits up in the foreplay version together with um, a matching shade of silk mohair, um, I also worked another sample which was a test knit for my friend Jenny Ansa of Koti Kotoni and this is the Vechna Shawl, Vechner means um, wheat in Finnish. Sorry, the mohair sometimes, it's just my nose if it's so close to my face. 
Um, but yeah, this is the Vehna shawl and it's beautiful. I love the fabric. Like it's very, as you can see, it's quite drapey. And I absolutely love these elements that are like, now I'm showing it upside down, um, that are in, um, inspired by wheat stalks. And I think it's just so pretty. And it features those wheat stalks all over and a couple of cables, like the cables are as um, on one side and then they repeat on the other side. Oh, it's very hard to show such a big shawl. Um, but they are on both sides and they are very easy to work. And then it has a little garter edging as well, um, resulting in a very big triangular shape that I hope you can see this way. <laughs> it's very hard to show it on camera in its full size. But yeah, I um, got gauge for this with four millimeter needles and I worked this in the BFA Romney four ply with um, a strand of cloud silk mohair and I used about um, pretty much all of it, like two skeins of the four ply and two skeins of the cloud silk mohair in the colorway linen, which is like a rosy beige. Um, and I only did a one swatch instead of three. <laughs> and so I ended up with a couple of leftovers, about 15 grams of this and six grams of the cloud silk mohair. And I think if I would have done all of the swatches, I would be left with almost no leftovers, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, and the size of this is very generous. So I can totally see myself, you know, wrapping this around me and having it around me like very cozily. And it's just the perfect size uh, for me to wear. And I'm incredibly happy with it. The fabric is so nice. I just want to knit everything in this yarn combo now. Um, but yeah. Um, this pattern is about to come out. I'm going to post everything below as soon as things are like release dates are there and the pattern is released. I'm going to add it down below so you can reference it. Um, but yeah, this is the Vechner shawl that I'm just going to keep on for now because it's so cozy. Um, but yeah, I think that is it about the shawl. Um, next up we have another sample and this one is also a very special one um, of a pattern soon to be released uh, by my dear friend uh, Inesh of Vetnit and this is the Citrine Jumper. So the Citrine Jumper is this beautiful pattern um, that is worked in a faux rib. I don't know if you can see that by just, you know, slipping stitches and in the next row rip, um, knitting them. It has this beautiful cable detail at the, um, at the neckline and down the raglan. Um, and then it repeats at, down at the cuffs and also for the hemline. Can you see that? Yeah. And this one was worked in the colorway antique um, in the BFL Romney DK and it is around, we used around 400 grams for a crop version. So this one again is quite cropped and if I remember correctly, it was a size six, but that's mostly because Inesh has a big, like a lot of sizes in her patterns because she's not only covering like, she has in between sizes often. And um, that is why I'm a different size in this one, but it should equal a size four, I think. If I'm not mistaken but yeah this one was worked slightly cropped like for about it's usually five centimeters that I'm cropping garments because yeah as I said I'm not that tall um, and yeah this is also the beautiful like the sleeve design is so beautiful look at the decreases around the sleeves it's just very unique and very beautiful and I can tell that this pattern has, you know, been very, very thought through. Um, Inesh was so kind to share a couple of facts with me beforehand, um, just so you, I could share them with you. And I think the most um, 
the, the fun fact that I enjoyed the most was that she was spending the whole duration of the good, the bad and the ugly uh, to design the hemline, to just write the hemline down. Um, that's how thought through it is. And now she kind of remembers it with Ennio Morricone sounds in her head. And I just love that story. But, you know, it really feels as if she has poured all her heart into this pattern. It's so thought through and there's so many modification options. It's of course size inclusive and goes up to a 165 centimeters bust circumference, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. And this does not have a lot of positive ease, so it should cover quite some sizes. And it's just, you know, she has paid so much attention to every single detail. Um, and it's just an incredible, like, it's just incredible how detailed she worked and how, what a, what a mastermind she is. Because, you know, I would have probably gone crazy about this <laughs> if I would have thought about these numbers. But, um, yeah, and I, I will say that this is definitely not a beginner's pattern because even though uh, once you complete the yoke portion, it's pretty smooth sailing um, for the body part and the sleeves. But in the beginning, to make this fit very well, there are a couple of, you know, short rows and such um, that Inej designed in a way um, that it fits very well. But that also means that you have to keep track of quite a couple of things at the same time. So you have to keep track of the, the increases, the stitches that are going down here. So what, where, what row you're on in case, you know, just so you know when to cable um, then the stitch pattern and all that. So um, we were speaking about this before um, before I recorded this video and I said that, oh, please don't feel like I'm saying anything bad about the pattern. I'm definitely not. I just want to stress that. Even though it might look quite simple construction-wise, it um, just requires a bit of attention. It's not that, you know, it's not that it's not enjoyable or anything. It's just that if you're a beginner knitter, it might be helpful to get familiar with um, working quite a couple of techniques at the same time and keeping track of a lot of things at the same time, um, just so you're not getting frustrated. That it was something we discussed beforehand because I was like, I want to be sharing this info with people and it should not feel as if it's not enjoyable to knit. I just wanted to say that um, it's important people know that this is just not a beginner pattern. It's more for intermediate to advanced knitters. And um, we just wanted to make sure that we say this to people because um, yeah, it might be frustrating else if you're like at the very beginning of your knitting career and you're a bit overwhelmed with how much is going on. And it's there's nothing that, you know, I don't want to put shade on that at all. I, to be honest, sometimes have such a full head that I cannot, you know, get my head around very complicated patterns where I have to follow a lot of things at the same time. And I have been knitting for like 15 years at least. So <laughs> this is not something, um, it's perfectly normal to not feel like that, but I can definitely tell that it's very engaging still and that you can, you know, it's very enjoyable to knit still. I just want to raise, like, I, I just want to make you aware of the fact that in the beginning you have to, maybe it's not just relaxed TV knitting, you have to pay attention. Am I saying this in a way that it's relatable? Anyhow, um, the pattern is lovely. I, the, the pattern, the testers group was also very lovely to work with and it was super exciting to see all the different versions. Like some of you were so creative in choosing colorways uh, for this and I'm just, you know, I, every time I saw a finished version, I was like, oh, this is nice as well. I, I wouldn't have imagined it myself, but it's lovely to see in that color. So, yeah. But this is all about the citrine jumper. Um, it's a beautiful, the fabric is also beautiful, even though it's like kind of double knitted because of the, um, of the slipped stitches. You can see that here. Um, the yarn still keeps its drape as you can see here if I wiggle it a little bit maybe um, and I think it's just beautiful um, to work with this um, yeah this is a citrine jumper I hope I didn't forget to say something about it um, did I say how much we used like around 500 grams for this um, 
So I'm also going to put all the info on these samples um, in my Ravelry project so, and link them below. So you can reference everything I just said if you, in case you are not, you know, you don't have to sit down and <laughs> note everything I'm saying. Um, I'm definitely going to put all the info below. Um, and that's not all. I also, um, last time you received those very well, I uh, curated another list of pattern suggestions for this new yarn. Um, that is also linked down below. You can access it through the link and it will guide you to a Ravelry bundle that I created with patterns that would be suitable for either the 4-ply weight version or the DK weight version. Um, or even one of them with some silk mohair or whatever. So there are a lot of options um, there from accessories to um, to garments to any kind of whatever you might want to knit uh, with it. So I hope that this helps with inspiration a little bit. Um, last time I got the feedback that you found this very helpful to, um, you know, reference it and uh, you can just easily put it into your favorites. It's a bit easier than me just talking about <laughs> the patterns and explaining to you why they are pretty. So they are all linked down below, those pattern suggestions. And I'll also make sure to add all the info of this base to my base page on my website. So there you can also reference the pattern suggestions, the meterage again, um, the blend info. So just so you can have everything in one place and reference it back again. Um, I hope that's helpful. Let me know if there's anything I'm missing info-wise, because sometimes it's like whenever I record those videos, it feels as if I have studied for a vocabulary test before because I need to remember all the facts. <laughs> so please bear with me if I forget something and just let me know if there is something I should have maybe covered more intensely. Um, but yeah, I guess we are getting to the end of this video. Um, I will put all the info you might need down below and link everything. Um, also with the pattern suggestions, I can also put them here one more time um, and down below because I think it's very helpful to have, you know, an inspiration on what you can knit with this. And I have now, you know, I'm now familiar with this yarn so I can um, kind of curate a list of things that I think would work with it very well. But overall, I would say this yarn is incredibly versatile. Um, it is drapey, but also holds up his shape. You could, you could see it in the swatch when I was showing it, that it's like, you know, even though you can bounce it, it bounces back into shape. So it's not gonna lose its shape too much. Like for example, some alpaca yarns are kind of, they tend to, you know, weigh themselves down. So this is not necessarily um, how it behaves. It's, it really holds its shape quite nicely. It has a lovely stitch definition in my eyes. Um, even if you work it with like a mohair, like I did for the Vecna shawl, it still has a beautiful stitch definition. It is not too blurred, if I may say so. Um, uh, that is also probably because it's a worsted spun yarn. Um, I cover this in a couple of videos already, the difference between worsted and woolen spun, so I'm not going to go in detail about this here. But yeah, this is it about this new yarn. I hope it helps uh, to envision how it might behave, um, like knit it up. I always like to add those samples and swatches, and even though it's like a lot of work, not complaining, it's a lot of knitting work, so that's fun work, I guess. Um, I just hope it really makes it easier for you to imagine how it knits up. Um, please let me know what you think of those samples, if they are actually helpful or not. Um, but in my eyes, I would always think like, if I would buy a new yarn base that I'm not familiar with and that I might not know how the blend behaves, I would find it quite helpful to see it knitted up in different kind of projects, um, but might also be very individual. So feel free to leave me some feedback on that if you want to. Um, as mentioned, I will put all the info down below. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask me any questions uh, via email at hello at woolentwine.com. I also link that down below. And yeah, if you would like to give me a favor, like and subscribe to my channel and until then, I guess, see you in the next one and happy knitting. Bye.